right here in the pews at St. Gregory's at 875 Wilmot. Whether you're online, on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, or watching on our website, we are so glad that you are here. We do have two baptisms today, which is always a cause to rejoice, um, and it is also the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because I think I will forget if I wait until the end of the service, I'm going to invite those who are present after the service to go through these doors, and there are two baptismal certificates on the table um, in there. Ed is going to come and vanna them for us. Well done, Ed, Vanna. Um, so the baptismal certificates are on the table in there, um, and our new format of baptismal certificates allows all of us to sign them as people who have witnesses witnessed uh, that we will help these people grow in their faith and community on behalf of the whole community. So I invite you after the service to go through those doors and I sign the baptismal certificates so they will have those with them what? forever. Um, the baptismal certificate. Before we begin our worship, we will it's begin everybody. as we always do at St. Gregory's with a little bit of quiet. We like to calm our hearts and minds and center ourselves in the knowledge that God is God and we are not and to give thanks for that. I do have a bell ringer. Excellent. It just occurred to me I forgot to get one. Huzzah for people who know these things. So what I'm going to invite you to do, if you are comfortable with it, is put both feet on the ground. This helps us feel the ground beneath our feet and know that it is holy ground and to remind ourselves that we are grounded in God's creation even as we are beloved parts of that very creation. When the bell rings, I'll invite us into a minute of sacred silence where we can be still and hear the Holy Spirit speak to us. When the bell rings for the second time, we will end our moment of sacred silence our music will begin, and we can all stand to begin our spoken worship.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord and one Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, the, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had, a, had brick for stone and bitmen for motar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, look, they are only one people, and they have only all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of, the, of all the earth and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel because the Lord confused the language of, of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Baby. 
The day of Pentecost has come, and the disciples of Jesus are all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven comes a sound like rush, rushing of violent wind, and the sound like wind fills the entire house where they're sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appear among them, and the tongues rest on each of them. All of them are filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in different languages like as the Spirit enables them. Amanamin sumasalangitka Amrekeshin uliyabuji Pater Noster quies in celis By Noster who says itself Tenni onoradu watastas no cio Padre Nostro que estas en el cielo Vater Unser im Himmel Miotiank a qui a maniac ban board. Notre Père, qui est au ciel. Now, there are devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At this sound, the crowd gathers and is bewildered because each one hears them speaking in the native language of each. Sambahin ang ngalan mo. Mapasa amin ang Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit und die Erwerbigkeit. Amen. They are made in astonish. Aren't they all from Galilee? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, in Japanese and Portuguese and Korean and Latin? In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. What does this mean? They're drunk. <laughs> but Peter, standing with 11, raises his voice and addresses them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these people are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. No, it's not. Well, close enough. Still, it's too early to be drunk. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and, da and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men sh shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And I will show signs in heaven and on earth before the coming of the Lord, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Peter tells them many more things about the prophets, King David and Jesus. Let everyone know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus who was crucified. 
Now when they hear this, they are cut to the heart. <gasps> they say to Peter and to the other apostles, What should we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom God calls. The word of the Lord. The children are invited to join in the gospel procession. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, we'll do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Please be seated. So what is your baptism story? Do you know it? Have people told you, do you remember? Some of you may remember your baptism day, be able to tell firsthand the story of the day you were baptized. Many of you, I suspect, have stories that have been told to you by parents or grandparents. It has become lore. Some families make stories bigger than they actually are. This may not happen in your family. This happens in our family. Do you remember it yourself or have you been told? Who decided you should be baptized? Who made that decision? What did you wear? Were you in a fancy long white dress with a bonnet and socks that wouldn't stay on your feet? Do you know why people chose to baptize you? Or do you know why you chose to be baptized? Why did people decide to do this thing where water is poured on your head, possibly oil poured on your head? Why did they decide that this was the thing to do? Baptism isn't because we want to be God's beloved people and so we get the water poured on our heads so that we are finally beloved by God. That's not how baptism works because everybody is beloved by God. So you don't have to do this to get God's love. You already have it by virtue of being because you are part of God's beloved creation. So if everybody is already a beloved child of God, why bother? Why do we go through this trouble? Why do we get up on a Sunday morning and have all the family come in and the chaos that happens and the dress and the things and the cake and the cookies and all of the things? Why do we bother? For me, I believe it's because we make an intentional choice to be a part of a particular group of God's people called Christians. As presiding bishop Michael Curry calls it, the Jesus movement. Right? We choose to be a part of this movement. We want to make a claim that we are part of this particular group of God's beloved people. God loves all people. We choose to be a part of this group called Christians, people who claim to follow the life and work of Jesus Christ, who claim to live by that value, who claim to live by the way that Jesus presented himself, who claim to believe that Jesus was, in fact, is, in fact, God incarnate on earth. We prepare for that then. If you choose to be baptized as an adult or a, a person who can consent, you have to go through preparation, right? I mean, Lisa, who's going to be baptized, and I have been meeting every week. We've been talking about baptism. We've been talking about faith. We've been wrestling with questions of God and God's people. We work at it, this life of Christ. We work at being people who are part of the Jesus movement even parents who are baptizing babies meet with me and we talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it and that this is a one-time thing that leads to a lifetime, right? It's a part of it. It's a beautiful day, y'all. It's a momentous occasion. And for just a brief moment today, we're going to have two of the most recent Christians made on earth. Isn't that cool? In this particular place at this particular time. And they're making us start. They're making a start to living life as Christians. They have always lived as beloved children of God, and today they say we want to live as life of Christians. We want to live this Jesus movement, and so we're going to do it. And then they will discover, maybe minutes, maybe hours, maybe days or weeks if they're super lucky, that it's not something that just washes over you and makes you a completely different person all of a sudden. Right? They will find days, weeks, hours from now that life still feels kind of the same. They're still screwing up. The world is still screwed up, right? It doesn't feel like much has changed, even though they have made this huge commitment. They won't have a completely, visibly transformed life, perhaps. They won't be super faithful, courageous Christians all the time with capes. It's unlikely, right? That's not how it works. They'll still be human. The world will still be the world, and we know what the world is. We've witnessed day after day what the world is. We carry the heaviness of what the world is within us. Even those of us who try to live lives of joy and hope know that the world is still the world, right? And as Christians, we're venturing forth into that world, perhaps with a changed view of it, perhaps with this changed perspective of how we go out. But it does turn out 
baptized or not, that living a life of faith and community is complicated and hard and fraught and not an easy thing to do. We often feel unmoored or scared or ill-equipped for the chaos of the world. Baptism doesn't change that, right? And it's into this experience that John speaks in our gospel today. John is talking to disciples who are confused and who are scared. They are past the point of being able to listen deeply because they have just heard that Jesus said he is going to die and he's leaving them and it's all over. And they're scared. And so they know already that they have failed over and over again. And they see that what they thought was going to happen isn't going to happen. And so they feel that the world has failed them. And there they are. And into this chaos, into this knowledge that they have, that the life that they thought might be, might not be, into this knowledge that they have that the world is still heavy and broken despite the fact that they are face to face with the living Savior, he promises the Spirit. He says, hey, I am leaving, but you will be left forever, forever with this spirit, with this advocate to guide us in Jesus' commandments. The spirit will fill you, will be with you all of your days, and will guide you as you try to follow my commandments. As you try to do these things that we promise in baptism, we aren't left to do them alone. Jesus says to the disciples, the spirit will be there to aid you, to guide you. To them, to us, to all of us who have chosen this way to be a part of the movement, the Jesus movement, Jesus says the Spirit will guide you. In our baptismal vows, which some will make for the first time today, and we will renew, those of us who have been baptized, we say that we will do these things with God's help. We aren't left alone. We don't have to live this life of faith alone. We are given the Spirit who is love embodied who lives within us and inspires us to live that life of love. And we are given a community that is designed to help us live a life of love. Jesus says the Spirit will help us live his commandment. And this is taken out of context. But what we didn't hear is that just before this reading, Jesus has said three times his commandment is love one another, love one another, love one another. And so that's what it's about. The spirit, this baptism, this reason is to love one another, is to enter into this life of faith, to be filled with the spirit of Christ, filled with the spirit of God, to be filled with the peace that passes all understanding that only the spirit can bring, and be guided by that spirit to live in love, to take one step in love, to continue in love. We will say in the baptismal vows some of the things we say we will do in love. We'll respect the dignity of every human being. We will love others as ourselves. The Spirit guides us in love and in action, in going forth, in doing, despite our fear, despite our confusion, despite despair that may settle over us. We are given the Spirit to send us out, gifted the Spirit and the community, to be loved and to love actively. We are equipped, we are empowered, and we are sent forth from this place. So remembering your baptismal story. Some of you are creating your own today. With that in your head, the next question could be, what is your living a baptized life story? What is your empowered by the spirit and love story? That's God's story. That's our story. Sent forth to share love with everybody in the world. That is a story worth telling. Beloved ones, that is a story worth living. Let's go forth from this place and live it. I invite the parents and godparents to come forward. The congregation can remain seated for now. 
I invite y'all to come forward and kind of array yourself here. There we go. <laughs> Doesn't matter where, it just matters that. All right, we'll present Lisa first. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. We present Lisa to receive the sacrament of baptism. Lisa, do you desire to be baptized? I do. She says she does. Good news. The other candidate will now be presented. We present Adeline, Apusia, Nicole, Adjman to receive the sacrament of baptism. To parents and godparents of sweet Adeline, will you be responsible for seeing that this precious girl that you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? We will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? We will, with God's help. And for the parents and godparents, and for our candidate, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Sometimes it gets me. Do you put your whole trust in God's grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And I'm going to ask the congregation to please stand and answer on behalf of yourselves and behalf of the whole body of Christ. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us then join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for Lisa and Adeline, who are here are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver Lisa and Adeline, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. 
Keep them in the faith and the communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to, to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that I'm sorry. <laughs> Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in the glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated and the children are welcome to come forward so you can see. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lisa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant Lisa the forgiveness of sin, and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and love you, and a gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Lisa, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. The light of Christ. All right, baby girl, it's your turn. Oh my goodness, here we go, water on the head. You ready? Adeline, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant Adeline the forgiveness of sin, I know, Pumpkin, and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an acquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, I know, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Oh my goodness. Sweet Adeline, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Hi, Pumpkin. The light of Christ. Baptism is messy business. Please stand. Beloved, let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, everybody. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord be with Peace. you. Peace of the Lord Peace be Peace. with you. Peace be with you all. Peace of the Lord. Don't forget to go back to you. You can be seated. Do we have anybody celebrating birthdays or anniversaries or travels for whom we can pray? We have birthdays, anniversaries, and travelers. Birthdays, anniversaries, travelers. I anticipate the traveler's side may be heavy this week. Just a guess. Birthdays, anniversaries, travelers. Uh-huh. Lots of travelers. All right, travelers got to keep scooting back. Make room for your friends. Thank you. All right. But we have a birthday. It is David's birthday. <laughs> May I touch your shoulder? May I touch your shoulder? 
Let's pray for David for his birthday. Holy God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on this your servant David as he begins a new year. Surround him with your wisdom. May he grow in wisdom and grace and understanding of you. And may, above all, may your peace, which passes all understanding, guide him all the days of his life. Amen. Happy birthday, David. Morrison's, are you celebrating an anniversary? Yes, ma'am. Which anniversary is this? 60. 60 years! <laughs> that is wonderful. Let us pray for you. Yeah, touch your shoulders. Holy God, we give you thanks for Chuck and Marilee, for their devotion to each other and to you, for inviting you into this relationship of theirs that it may be stronger and fortified in your love and your grace. Continue to bind them together. Continue to uphold them and strengthen them and fill them with your love and grace and joy. May they see you in each other and may their love for each other be an example of your love for this hurt and broken world. We ask all this in the name of your Son, who you sent to bind up the brokenhearted and to send joy to the world. Amen. Happy anniversary, beloveds. And for all of the people who are traveling and for the Trophithics who are traveling, we pray also. And Meredith as well. And Meredith is also traveling. For all of the travelers, we pray. Holy God, surround these true travelers with your angels and keep them safe. May their travels bring them rest and recreation in you. May they see you in new and wondrous ways and the people and experiences they encounter along their way. Above all, bring them back safely to their homes so that they can continue to serve you as you have called them to do in the world. Amen. Safe travels, beloved. Apparently there's gonna be nobody at church on Sunday. <laughs> That's okay, we got Zoom. <laughs> we don't pass the plate here at St. Gregory's right now, but we do have plates at each exit, so if you feel in inclined as you leave we do invite you to give generously at the plates on your way out the door you can also give online we do invite you at this time you can pull out your devices and in the upper left hand corner of our website stgschurch.org is a donate button where you can give uh, to the church and to the world we invite you to do so as much and as generously as you can and now beloved i invite you to walk in love as christ first loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to god
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, God, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. You loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, God sent the Holy Spirit. The first gift for those who believe to complete God's work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, holy God, Having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. 
Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Gregory and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We, pray you in unis- we praise you in unison with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved children of God.
standing as you're able, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We do have a couple of announcements about things that are happening in the life of this congregation. Uh, today at 1 p.m., is it 1 or is it 2? One. Oh dear goodness. At 1 o'clock, that's what happens when you go on vacation the week before Pentecost. At 1 o'clock today, Bill Truck and Broad's funeral will be. Uh, the family is expecting 250 to 300 attendees. As you can imagine, that will much fill this space. So if you would like to be seated in the nave, you want to come early, we will have overflow seating uh, in Founders Hall. And it will also be available on Zoom. Next Sunday at 5 p.m., we have a free women's self-defense class. There is a wonderful uh, martial arts studio new in, in Deerfield who housed here while their studio was being built. Fantastic people. And so they're giving to us for free this women's self-defense class. We'll have it in Founders Hall. It's going to be great. This guy is fantastic. He found his calling to teach because one of his dear friends was um, killed in college. Um, and so he found a need to teach martial arts to people uh, so that they can protect themselves if they need to. And so I invite all women to sign up and come to the class. We're going to go to Fat Rosie's afterwards. There may be fun food and beverage. So women's night out. Y'all come on. But sign up so we know you're coming. Uh, we have lots of summer fun with our Better Together congregations. As most of you know, we are partnered with three other Episcopal congregations to do most things together because we are better together. Um, so we're going to do lots of things together on Sunday, June 26th, which is coming fast and furious. Um, it will be first in here at 930 in the morning, Senior Sunday, graduating Senior Sunday. So Celeste and Chloe will be preaching and bringing the good news to us. And then afterwards, we will head down to St. Elizabeth's in Glencoe for their pride picnic at 1130. Woo -woo, wear your rainbows and let's go down to um, St. Elizabeth to have, celebrate Pride Sunday. On July 10th, we are going to have a picnic at Independence Grove uh, up in Libertyville, which is a fantastic place to go. Kids are going to paint shoes so they can bring white canvas shoes to paint. It's going to be lots and lots of fun. It'll be potluck. More to come on that soon. And then on August 28th, we're going to a Chicago Dogs baseball game in Rosemont because we can afford to do that. Um, so we're at 3 p.m. on the 28th. It's going to be great fun, so sign up for that. Um, also, youth who are sixth grade and higher are invited to a summer study of the Lord's Prayer, uh, which is going to be way more fun than that might sound. We're going to hang out together. We're going to have conversation and ice cream with Shelly and with me. We just wanted to hang out with um, the kids who are sixth grade and higher this summer, spend a little time together to do some study and to get to know each other um, and God a little bit better. So it'll be fun. The first one is Thursday, June 16th at Cafe de Oro at 4 p.m., um, over there. And the youth service trip to Feed My Starving Children in Libertyville is July 15th. You need to RSVP to Shelley. One quick reminder that when you are done in here, please walk down this hall and sign the baptismal certificates uh, for Lisa and for Adeline. Everybody who is here present can sign them kind of around and array uh, the space uh, so that they can have them for future use. There is a special place for the godparents and parents uh, and me to sign, but everybody else sign kind of all around. It'll be good. Please stand for the blessing. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with God's blessing, that you may abound more and more in that Spirit forever. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested on the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of God's presence. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to God in word and deed. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always.
Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Aren't they great? 